Well, Dave, we're here at the CCA workbench with yes, the sir. Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques. And yep. smelling a little fishy over here. Bob. Well, we got some ballyhoos out here because, you know, we talk about sail fishing, you know, every year. And uh, Florida is one of the best places in the United States to catch them. Um, they catch a few up in the Gulf around Texas and Louisiana, but mostly it's Florida. You know, it's a Florida thing. And in South Florida, everybody likes to use live baits. You know, it's a big live bait fishery between, from the Keys all the way up to around Fort Pierce. Correct. And then the reason for that is because the fish come pretty close to the shore there. We have, you know, the Gulf Stream is really close to the shore and they have a nice edge there that all the fish can group up on. So you can put a boat out there, put some kites up and float down that depth, you know, the 120 feet, 130 feet or whatever. And the fish congregate on those depths in those right. areas on those ridges and ledges and whatnot. Once you get up past Fort Pierce or out in the Gulf of Mexico, you got a lot, yeah, you got a lot of land to cover and you, to get the bites and to find them. So if you just sit in one spot and wait till you come across them, you're not going to get in them as, as fast as a guy who can be moving and then finding them. And you're not moving that fast. You know, you're probably moving between four and six knots, depending on, on your ballyhoos and whatnot. But, uh, you know, you can still catch plenty of sailfish if you're in the right place by trolling. You don't have to put out uh, live baits. And here's some of the different ways we got here. Uh, this, this one here is a, is a Sea Star, and I rigged this one a, a, on a wire rig. This is, the, this is the rig that we all use up at the Cape Canaveral area because we have a lot of barracudas, we have a lot of kingfish, we have a lot of toothy critters. And if we try to put, troll mono around all day, we're gonna end up losing a lot of rigs. This is a Sea Star, an Island Sea Star on a, just a pin rig. Right. You know, just a regular pin rig Got it. with a J hook in it. Right. And you know, you just troll this along at seven knots. That Sea Star is a great one to put on the flat. Oh, I was gonna ask you that. It runs on the flat. It'll run on an outrigger too, but I, I pull it on the flat a lot. And then sometimes I'll pull it with a double hook rig because it catches wahoos as well. But that's one of my favorite lures is the Sea Star from Island Lure. And, and like I said, you can pull them on wire. Sailfish will still eat something when it's on wire. Doesn't mean it won't. My favorite of all baits when I'm trolling is a naked ballyhoo with a circle hook in it. Now, this one, you know, has, a, has one of the really cool little swivels in the top that uh, it's, a, it's called a, a rigger swivel. And what it is, it's got a little rubber donut on one end that you just slide your hook through. Once you get this thing rigged up tight to the head of the ballyhoo and pull them from the front, which you always want all your baits to pull from directly from the front. If they're not pulling from up here, then they're pulling from back here somewhere. And that's what makes them do that spin. Spinning. And we don't want any spinning. We want that bait to swim just like a regular fish, even though it's using his own uh, camouflage. You know, when you're, when you're pulling a bait and he's swimming perfect, he's got his dark side on the top and his light side on the bottom, and that's using his perfect camouflage. So he's, he's built that way to keep from being seen. And so, this is- So this, we have a loop in the end of our diamond leader. Correct. And then we're gonna use a diamond swivel on our right, on your main line. Yeah. On your main line. So then we just loop in anything. and out. Correct. Oh, well, okay. well, you just, you know, this has a, has a snap. So you right. just snap on there. Right. And yeah, and then, and that, that keeps everything from, you know, spinning up on you and getting everything all messed up. My blindness, now, can't see it. I know, that's why I don't try to do it on camera because I can't <laughs> see it. <laughs> Keep going, Dave. Now, next we got, you know, this is a, this is one of my favorite lures. This is a chugger, a super chugger. Uh, it's actually, it's a Moldcraft little, little mini chugger. But uh, when you put this on the, on the head real down close, what, anytime you put any kind of lure in front of the bait, it actually helps the bait last longer. You know, if you're, especially if it's rough out, you put a nice skirt over it or, uh, you know, something that, that covers it up like one of these little chuggers and it's, and it's curling along, it, you know, it's getting beat up if it doesn't have something in front of it. This thing really puts a lot of, uh, a, a big profile out. This is actually a good marlin pitch. Okay. If, you, if you've got, if you know, if you're fishing for sailfish and you got a lot of little tiny stuff out and he doesn't want to eat it, you throw something out here with a, with a big head on it that pushes a lot of water, it'll get their attention a lot of times, even when they won't eat the naked ones. Right. They'll run over and pound on this one because it's got that nice chugger out in front. And then this one's for? This is a tracker and it's, a, it's another island lure that's a good lure for the outriggers. Um, it's a good, 
you know, it's a good pitch as well. You know? And then this is the way you would rig a lure in front of with a circle a hook. A circle hook. What, what you do is this is what's underneath all that mess. You have a swivel with an 18 inch copper wire. Right. And what you do is you take out the eyeballs of the ballyhoo and wrap it all around, wrap around his gills and through his eyes a few times until you have this swivel sitting right on the end of his, right on the end of his beak, real up tight to his nose, which is what's underneath there. And then, you know, you put this down on top, you get your hook in there, right. in, the, in the hole that you've made, you've made a big loop in your floss, or I use the diamond 50 right. goes with the same thing. You put an overhand loop in there, hold that hook there for me. Hold it. Yeah, just hold that hook. You put an overhand loop in it, and just, and just cinch tight, it down. Tight, tight. And you can do another one if you'd like, but right. usually one will hold. And then right. your mono's on there and your ballyhoo's out the bottom. And you know, you have to let him eat this thing. It's a right. circle hook. You gotta let him eat it. He swallows it. You count to five, put the drag up and keep winding until it comes tight. If it doesn't come tight, you wind it all the way up till he's up on the surface and let him try again. Because that circle hook hasn't hurt him. If he come, you know, he'll keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back. That segment was tight. Oh. So